finally, after a multitude of attempts, here are the reasons as to why I've stopped doing a wash and go. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Miss Laura Lee 11. And if you already heard in the intro, I'm going to be giving you reasons as to why I've stopped doing a wash and go. Now, this is not to put anyone off doing a wash and go. These are my personal reasons. You may be able to relate. So let's just get straight into it. Number one being, I am not getting the full benefit of hair grease. Now, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I love my hair grease. I've even done hair grease wash and goes. And don't get me wrong, guys, I have loved my hair grease wash and goes. No, they were not greasy. Yes, they were defined. However, even with that updated wash and go routine, I don't feel I'm getting the full benefit of hair grease. Now, let me explain what I mean. Hair grease for me, or hair grease for anybody, is meant to be a sealant. It doesn't actually moisturize your hair. Someone actually mentioned this in my comment section. No, it doesn't moisturize your hair. When you seal your ends, you're sealing in the moisture. Now, when I use hair grease, I prefer to do a protective style, i.e. two plaits, four plaits, box braids, what have you. When my hair is just free flowing and it's got hair grease in it, it tends to rub off because I'm actually having to manipulate my hair. My hair is not just put out of the way, braided up, and the hair grease is locked in. My hair is free flowing and therefore at night there's things I have to do to my hair, i.e. put it up in a pineapple and within the space about a day or two, the hair grease is completely gone. My hair is dry, frizzy, puffy. All right, so that's reason number one. Now I would say number two would result in a failed wash and go and that is tangles at the end of my hair. Now when my hair is fully moisturized and sealed with hair grease, I don't necessarily get the tangles initially in days one to two maybe. Well, I used to keep my wash and goes in up to four days because that was the longest I could do it without my hair being dry. <laughs> However, I did notice I got much, much more single strand, fairy knot, split ends. And even though I sealed my hair, I was doing a lot to my hair. My hair's out. So it's at a length where it's rubbing on my shoulders and beyond that, where my hair rubs, it just causes friction, creating more tangles, creating more breakage and snapping because I'm having to untangle that. However, that's not to say that wash and goes do not grow your hair. My hair grew tremendously in wash and goes. Although I am a person who is a hair toucher, not anybody else's, just my own. <laughs> but when my curls are just flowing about, you know, I tend to twiddle them a little. Okay, so number three, a wash and go on type four natural hair can be very tricky. Usually, if you do have type four hair, you tend to notice that you have many different curl patterns. Um, not to say that any other curl types don't have different curl patterns and different issues. However, when you're type four, and I'm speaking again from my experience, you have tighter curls, looser curls, lopsided hair, and that is usually what I get. This side of my hair, as I mentioned in my last video, is looser than this side. This side likes to bunch up, shrink up, and I don't mind either side, only if they were uniform. That is not what my hair wants to do. She wants to hang on this side, sleep on this side. <laughs> I have to do a lot of manipulation, and by manipulation, I mean I have to use a lot of, well, not a lot of heat, but I do have to stretch it. I feel like I'm damaging the roots, even though it's cool heat, I still feel like I'm having to manipulate the new growth, the roots, and I just don't want to touch my hair like that. I just want to leave it, I want to oil it, I want to grease it. Okay, so number four is too much product. Whether you are doing a wash and go with got to be gel, eco styler, creams, butters, hair grease, whatever the case may be, I find it's too much product, I really do. Not only do you have to pre-poo, shampoo, deep condition, condition in whatever order you tend to do that, leave-in conditioner, maybe spritz a little bit of moisture in, sealant, styler, like whatever you put in your hair, it's a lot of product. It doesn't necessarily weigh my hair down because my hair loves the weight. My hair needs a thick product to sink in so my hair can have that definition and that moisture. I find that with water and quickly sealing it in hair grease, I find that it's sufficient enough for my hair. Too much product on my hair and my scalp can lead to itchy scalp. Okay, so this is number five. Now, if you watch some of my older videos, I did a lot of wash and goes. I've done S curl wash and goes, wet look, hair grease wash and goes, eco styler wash and goes, and doing a wash and go series did take a toll on my hair. But if it's just the stress that I put on my hair, and I believe it was to do with the stress, what I mean by stress is my wash and goes I preferred were the more defined ones. Now for the more defined wash and goes, 
I would have to use a gel that had a cast. My hair tends to frizz in certain places, so I'd have to use gel with a high hold, i.e. Eco Style Olive Oil number 10. And then what I would do is I'd softly crunch out the cast in my hair. I found washing my hair every four days and then doing this procedure led to my roots becoming weaker. I realized it was the tension I was putting on my hair because once my hair had set in the gel and my hair was hard, if I tried to, without breaking the cast, if I tried to move my hair to another position, it literally would snag at the roots. So I'd have to manipulate it and take that cast out. So the sixth reason is a lot of shrinkage. Now this is not really a problem. However, where my hair was growing and I saw the growth myself when my hair was washed, you know, when your hair is washed and it's all nice and stretched out, when it dried, it just shrunk up. So no matter the length of my hair, it literally always used to shrink to my shoulders, still does. Hence why I wear my hair in a protective style or a stretched state. Don't get me wrong guys, this is doing a wash and go with creams. So where I wanted to, to keep my hair moisturized and I wanted to kind of stray away from the hair gels I would use creams okay so number seven I still do it because I have to and it's detangling but when I done a wash and go I had to detangle a lot more because my hair was going to be out however when my hair is in a protective style and not to say I, I detangle less but I don't have to detangle till my strands are smooth and curl around one another as I would have to if my hair was in a wash and go so that's number seven number eight thinning ends now I found that when my hair is in a wash and go my hair's got to a length now that it just rubs on my clothes all the time this has allowed my ends to thin in the past not now my ends are nice and thick my hair's all nice and juicy <laughs> So number nine, my hair being dry. It wasn't necessarily my wash day routine that was making my hair dry, it was the product, the end product, i.e. gels. Even though they were gels without alcohol, my hair still would be dry. These are just long-term effects and this is why I was doing wash and goes for so long because I didn't see them initially. They're right, so that's number nine. Okay, so number 10. Before we go on to number 10, if you are enjoying this video, go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to click the like button and at the end of this video, you can leave your comment down below. Okay, so number 10. <laughs> I have mentioned this in many videos, natural hair products. They're very expensive, guys. I'm not gonna buy a bottle of gel for 16 pounds each time. I can't do it, not every month, no. I mean, I'm a person, right? That when I go into a hair shop, I like to pick up lots of different things. And they're pricey in their own their own sense, but not £16 pricey. And it's not what I can afford. I just like to explore more stuff. And I don't feel that when something is really overpriced, it's something I'm going to continue buying. It's very costly a month, you know, doing a wash and go. Okay, so number 11. This is one that really used to irritate me. It's air drying. Air drying took forever. So if I was going to do a wash day, it would have to be early in the morning. Now on the weekends, I don't necessarily want to get up early, but if I have to wash my hair, I do. And I don't feel that my hair should dictate how my day goes. I preferred my hair to air dry because I wanted to reduce the heat I was putting on my hair. I liked the way my hair looked at the end of it being air dried, but I couldn't take the hours upon hours upon two, three days of drying. <laughs> All right, I'm exaggerating, but it took long. That leads me on to number 12, keeping in the theme of drying hair. Let's talk about heat drying. It worked because that's how I would get the perfect wash and go if I wanted volume. However, again, it took long. I don't like sitting with a diffuser on my head and then I let go of that section and the roots are still damp. That really used to irritate me. Again, as well, guys, I'm on a journey of not using heat or minimizing my heat. So it wasn't really an option for me near the end of doing my wash and goes. So that is number 12. Okay, so number 13, I couldn't stretch my wash days really longer than four days. If I wanted to stretch my hair longer than four days and I'd done maybe six, seven days, my hair would look good, be voluminous, bit of defined, bit of frizz. However, my hair was very dry, very dry. So when I went to then wash my hair, the shampoo wouldn't take to my hair, the products wouldn't take to my hair, just because I've left it over that period of time. Now you may think, does my hair do that in a protective style because I leave it in longer. This morning I spritzed my box braids and I sealed it again with some oil. But prior to me even putting these box braids in, I moisturized my hair. I put in the hair grease, which is a sealant. I'm only gonna be wearing these box braids for about a week and a half to two weeks, but I'm gonna be spritzing my hair every morning. I'm not trying to get my curls to define right now. I'm wearing my stretch state and my main priority is moisture. I find that the more moisturized my hair is, and not over moisture guys. The more moisturized my hair is, the more healthier it is, the more length of tension I have. Last but not least, 
my biggest bugbear of doing a wash and go was finding that my products did not mix you've washed your hair you've done the deep conditioning you've done the conditioning and tangle everything then you put the product in your hair with the leave-in so i.e a leave-in and a gel put it on your hair and you see the little white ball-ins of silicone and you have to wash your hair out again that was a lesson I had to learn a few times. I did start mixing it in my hand and when I done that and the product seemed to mix, I would then apply it to my hair. So it was just trial and error. Okay, so the long and short of it is doing wash and goes on my type 4 hair consistently took a toll on my hair and I'm just giving it a rest. I'm not saying I'm never doing a wash and go again because I do want to see how my wash and goes are going to look when my hair is even longer. <laughs> I, I just I just want to see and I don't think I'm going to be using gel I think I'm going to be experimenting with other products more like creams so that is it guys I hope you enjoyed these tips let me know what your reasons are as to why you don't do a wash and go or why you actually still continue doing wash and go and what is your favorite go-to style all right I'll see you later guys bye